Should I stop using WinForms? This is a Reddit post that came across my feed today and I jumped at the chance to react to it because it allows me to make a broader point to you young developers or people just getting started that you don't necessarily have to be on the cutting edge hype train to have a successful technical career. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. So on to the post. Hi everyone, current manufacturing automation engineer here. For three years of my career, I did all of my development in VB.NET framework WinForms apps. I've now since switched to C Sharp at my job for the last two years. Part of being an automation engineer, I use WinForms to write desktop apps to collect data, control machines and robots, SCADA, etc. I'm kind of contained to the .NET framework as a lot of the industrial hardware I use has .NET framework DLLs. I am also the sole developer at my facility, so there's no real dev infrastructure set up. I know that WinForms are old. Should I switch my development to something newer? Honestly, not a fan of WPF. It seems UWP and MAUI are more optimized for .NET, not .NET Framework. Is it even worth trying to move to .NET when so much of my hardware interfaces are built in the older framework? So first, let's break a few things down for the beginners out there. VB.NET. That's short for Visual Basic.NET. And Visual Basic is a .NET framework language. You can write apps for it just like you can in C Sharp. It has fallen by the wayside. C Sharp is far more popular. Most of the industry has moved on. But as this author talks about, there is a lot of legacy code that is still out there in Visual Basic. Now, the good news is if you learn C Sharp, you can learn Visual Basic. You will have no problems if you go work for a company and they have VB apps, because if you know C Sharp, you can pick up VB in like a week. It's very similar. It's not that hard to use. In fact, it's even easier to use than C Sharp in a lot of ways because Visual Basic was a beginner language. It was the Python of the 90s. And just to drive the point home, if I jump over to the TOB index, which ranks languages based on some social stuff, but it's not completely accurate, but it's one way of measuring a language's popularity and interest. Visual Basic is still in the top 10, which is actually a little surprising to me, but it is very heavily used in legacy applications. So that's why it's still there. There are a lot of these kinds of jobs out there. Despite what you may have heard, not all of the jobs out there are front end dev, React, JavaScript, etc. Now, the second thing I want to point out is this comment about the industrial hardware and how it has .NET Framework DLLs. Now, if you're new to programming, a DLL stands for Dynamic Link Library. And that is the way that .NET applications share code between apps. So if you have code that you want other people to use, you can package it into a DLL and then they can import your types and they can use your code. This is similar to a jar file in Java or a gem in Ruby. Basically every language has a way that developers can share code between applications and DLLs are the way that .NET does this. But the broader point is that in the enterprise, manufacturing, robotics, things like that, those interfaces to those machines are generally written to support languages like C Sharp and .NET, Java, and C++. That's one of the reasons why if you go back to my video on ranking programming languages, why I said that C Sharp and Java and C++ are more versatile than some of the other languages that you can choose to use. Because there is so much hardware out there and robotics and machinery that you never see or hear about that has applications written in languages like C Sharp, Java, and C++. And now the final bit. I know that WinForms are old. And the author isn't wrong. 
I was using WinForms back before the .NET framework was even created. WinForms were a thing back in the original Visual Basic language. I was using this back in the mid 90s personally. And I actually got my first paid professional programming job doing WinForms. So it is a very old technology, 30 plus years. But if we scroll down to the comments, something interesting happens. No, you shouldn't abandon WinForms. No, you shouldn't abandon WinForms. It's stable, it's consistent, it just works. .NET has newer versions of desktop frameworks, and that's what WPF and MAUI and Universal Windows Platform, those are all ways of making beautiful, modern apps that use modern frameworks with best practices as far as architecture and the way they support the separation of presentation code and logic. But WinForms is still around because Microsoft and Oracle Java, they like backwards compatibility. Manufacturers and enterprises do not like changes that break things. That's one of the biggest strikes against front-end web applications and the JavaScript ecosystem, is that they constantly abandon and break things, which keeps these businesses for which application development is not their core concern, it makes them stay away from those types of languages and they stick with the tried and the true and the stable languages. So you scroll through these comments and everybody is just saying, no, WinForms are fine, WinForms are fine. The software just needs to work. It's quick, it's easy, and there are jobs out there. So, like I said, I just wanted to point this out to you beginners because everybody today just seems to be pushing people towards web applications, JavaScript, React. There are so many jobs out there that are not those types of applications. So it's worth picking languages, especially in 2023 and 2024, where there is an oversaturation of front-end web devs. If you're serious about becoming a professional software developer, picking a more versatile language is a very good move. And now for fun, I actually haven't coded a WinForms app in probably 20 years, but it is so easy to work with these frameworks. I'm gonna switch over to Visual Studio and I've started a WinForms app. I haven't done anything to it. I just loaded the template and I am going to create a tip calculator app in real time, unscripted, unpracticed, just to show you what this guy is talking about, about how easy it is to get going with it and just build some apps that move some data around and do some things. Now here we are over in Visual Studio. We have a Windows Forms application just the way it comes and Form 1 is on the screen. Now, if I remember correctly, all of your Windows controls are in something called the toolbox. So I'm gonna to go to the view menu. Sure enough, there it is, there's the toolbox. Because Windows Form, when we talk about rapid application development, we're talking about drag and drop. So when I want labels, I can just drag a label onto the form. And then if I want to configure the label, you select it and you go to the properties window, which I don't have loaded. So there are view properties. And here we are. And these are all the properties for this label. And you can see you can give it a name, you can set its text. So I want this to be the amount. And then I also want something to be the percentage. But before I do that, I would like to format this text. It would be really nice, and here's font. It would be really nice if it was a little bigger. So let's make it 14. And it would be really nice if it was bold. Bold, false. I can set that to true. There we go. And then I also want a label for the tip percentage. And I want it to look like that one. So I'm gonna control C, copy it, control V, paste it. And now I have another label. I can line this up. I can go set the text. 
I don't want it to be amount. I want it to be tip percentage, just like that. And we can make these line up on the right side, very easy. And then I'm gonna need two text boxes because I want them to be able to enter the text of the amount and the text of the tip percentage. So I'm gonna double click text box. It's gonna drop one on the form. I'm gonna first go and configure its font. So same thing here, I'm gonna make it 14. When I tab off that, it should have got a little bigger. That's fine. And then I'm gonna control C, control V. And now I got a tip percentage box. Now I'm going to be reading data from these. So I want to give them a name so that I can reference them in the code. So you see here that it has a name property. I just gotta find it. it. Must be at the top, there we go. It wasn't in alphabetical order because it's so often used. Now back in the day, we used to prefix controls with the type. So you would type TXT amount, and then this one would be TXT percentage, just like that. And then I would like them to click a button to calculate the tip. So I'll drag a button onto the form. Same thing, I'm gonna change the font. I'm gonna go to 14. I'm gonna change the text of the button to be calculate tip. And I'm going to name this button BTN calculate tip, BTN for button. And let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. And again, in Windows Forms, if you wanted to, you can set the background color or set it to an image. You, you can make it look pretty if you really want to. You know, let's change the size of the form just like that. And then let's put a label on the form. And this is what we're going to have as our result. Now I'm gonna give this one a name because I'm gonna reference it in code. I'm gonna say LBL result. And we're gonna set the font to 14, just like that. And we're gonna make it, I don't think we have to make it bigger. It might actually grow on its own. We're gonna find out. So this would be fun. Does it have like a multi-line or any property like that? Because sometimes you had to worry about it like, you know, overflowing or things like that. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be a thing or not, but we're going to find out. I don't remember. But either way, we have label result. And when I double click calculate tip, it is going to add an event. The button calculate tip underscore click. So when the button is clicked, here is the code that I want you to run. This is really simple. It was great for beginners to learn on. So I'm gonna say, I need to get the values out of the text boxes and calculate the tips. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna write any defensive code. I'm gonna assume that what they type in is a number or a decimal. So let's go ahead and use a decimal type. I'm gonna say decimal amount is equal to the decimal dot parse of and there's our text boxes. Text amount, what property? The text property. Because guess what? A text box is text. C Sharp cares about types. It will not let you store text in a decimal value. You have to convert it, which is what parse does. And then I'm gonna say decimal tax equals decimal.parse txt, uh, txt percentage dot text and let's go ahead and divide this by 100 because I'm going to type it in as a whole number and then I'm going to say label result dot text equals and we'll write our message here we'll say the tip amount is and we'll say amount times tax and we'll format that as a currency, just like that. Now let's go ahead and run our application. And we'll say $100, a 15% tip. The tip amount is $15. And there you go. That's how easy Windows Forms is. So if you're working on 
applications like they're talking about in a manufacturing firm or a facility where you're just trying to do some quick controls of robots or machines or monitor data coming out of those machines, Windows Forms is quick and easy and it lets you just get things done and you don't have to be an expert developer to absolutely use it. So I'm genuinely grateful that this person posted this question on Reddit. And I agree with the crowd there on Reddit. You don't have to worry about being cutting edge. You're in a manufacturing facility. You're not writing code that consumers are using. Use what works and use what is easiest for you. And WinForms is great for that. And to my audience, especially the beginner and early career coders out there, just remember that the hype train is different than the reality of the day-to-day -day coder. There are lots of jobs out there that are not front-end web dev and are not React or any of the newfangled stuff. It's fine to live there if you want to, but there are plenty of jobs available not in those spaces. Don't ever listen to anybody who says something like, oh, that's old tech, or oh, that tech is dying. Because if they say that it's dying, what that usually means is that it's not popular or cool anymore, which means that companies are desperate to hire these people. When I talk about there still being COBOL jobs and Java and C Sharp being the COBOL of our times, that means there are ongoing stable employment opportunities in those languages and even in those older frameworks. Now, all of the languages, C Sharp, Java, C++, they also have new things. So you can be on the cutting edge in those languages too. But the great thing is if those cutting edge things don't work out, you can fall back to the tried and true where there are still jobs and there will remain jobs for decades to come. Happy coding.